This video is a amendment video. It's a continuation of this tutorial series. Um, I'm going to call this video 9.1 because um, in response to some questions and comments regarding this project, um, I think that I could better explain the process of, of attaching these bones to vertex groups and and how I achieved the weights in the spinal column. When I demonstrated attaching bones to certain areas of the mesh, I used the hip, and that was a pretty easy area to demonstrate with. So I'm going to do a demonstration with the head, because it involves some of the spine, some of the weight reductions that I used to graduate weights and get some mesh deformation. So first off, I'll put my rigging into object mode and select the model and go into edit mode. And the state that my model is in is I've just parented the rigging to the mesh. So it has its really rough assignments for vertex groups. And I'm at the point where I began manually correcting these vertex groups, which is more or less the start of video 9. So I'm going to look at the head here, and I'll select the head vertex group, and then select the ver vertices in that group. And looking at that group, the assignment looks completely reasonable, but to err on the side of caution, I like to remove the entire group and assign it manually. So I'll deselect it, and brush select first off an area that I know is only touching the head to avoid the eyeballs. And then I'll look at some of the other areas I want to attach to the head. In order to make the teeth open and close, for example, I need the upper row of teeth assigned to the head vertex group. To do that, I would zoom in on the teeth, use the brush select tool with a small brush, and select a row along the teeth that avoided selecting any of the jawbone because the jawbone needs to be separate and then use control L to select linked and this will select the entire row upper row of teeth so I can assign that to the head vertex group and I also want a portion of the spine attached to the head vertex group and how I decide on what portion is I look at the rigging and I'll assign a portion that extends to the pivot of the next bone down because I want them to interact. I want the head bone and the neck bone to interact and the pivot for the neck bone is down here. So I would select a group of vertices using brush select, use control L and this will highlight that entire row of bones in the spinal column and if I wanted to get more specific about that rotation point I could also brush select an area of this um, bone in the spinal column and it doesn't need to be done according to one full bone along the spine and it's actually favorable to not look at it as one full bone. So this would be my entire head vertex group. I'll start off by assigning it a weight and in my demonstration I believe that I used a weight of around seven so I'll use that weight as my demonstration purpose and then to achieve the graduation of weights I systematically box deselected everything that I wanted to carry a full weight. So I deselected first off the upper area of the head, which I want to hold a full weight. And then I reduce my weight and I'm not sure, I think I used a graduation of 0.2 and assign that weight to this group. So I assign that with the reduced weight of 0.5. And then I box deselected 
using the B key and the middle mouse button. Another area, reduce the weight by another two steps and assign that. And then box deselected again, another region, and I try to select matching sized regions in order to do this. Reduce the weight some more, assigned it, and box deselected another region. And since I'm at about the last group, I want to end at a value of 0 0.05 as being my smallest weight that I used in this assignment. And in a moment we'll poke into weight paint mode to see the graduation this creates in the spine. First off though, let's look at the jawbone. So we'll go to the jaw. First I need to deselect everything and I'll select the region that Blender assigned to the jaw. And as you can see, this is a huge massive region that we don't want attached to our jaw. So we remove this vertex group, or these vertices from the vertex group, I should say. Deselect, and then look at what we want attached to the jawbone. And what we want attached to the jawbone is the lower row of teeth as well as the jawbone. So I would zoom in on that, use the brush select tool, select a little bit of the jawbone, and pass along the bottom row of teeth, and press Control L, and this should highlight the jawbone and the bottom row of teeth. Now we don't want to forget our weights here, and because I use 7 on the head, 7 becomes a reasonable weight to use on the jaw, and it won't really matter because there's no interaction here, and it could as easily be a weight of 1. I assign that group, and let's just have a look in object mode, and take the rigging into pose mode first off. When I rotate the jaw, I now get separation in the teeth, where the upper row of teeth is anchored to the head bone, and the lower row of teeth is anchored to the jawbone. As well, when rotating the head bone, I have the beginnings and only rough beginnings of some mesh deformation in the spine. And in order to enhance this deformation, I would need to cre use the same method to create graduations in weight along the neck bone, the spine bone, and the pelvis bone. Let's clear that transformation and I'm going to go into a wireframe and quickly look at my rigging in edit mode. There's one edit I would suggest to this jawbone and that would be to take, select it, use the W key to subdivide it, grab the central pivot, limit the x-axis so that it doesn't go back and forth in the model and pull that pivot up to the rotation area of the actual jaw in the mesh. And then erase the bone that's connecting the new jaw bone to the neck. So we'll just get rid of that. And then take the new jaw bone, restore its name because it now carries the name jaw 001. And we want it to be jaw, simply jaw. And change it to child of head. And by changing it to child of head, when we're in pose mode, when we rotate the head, the jaw will now move with it. And it's just a superior setup to the old one, which wasn't very good. So let's go into object mode and have a look at the weight paints on this. So I'll select the head vertex group because it's the only one with the graduation. So this is the weight graduation that we achieved by using this um, deselecting method and assigning reduced weights as we worked our way down. And the same theory can be applied to each of the bones in the spinal column. And with some experimentation, one can come across a fairly reasonable mesh deformation there. And I'm out of time, but I hope that this helps to clarify how I achieved that um, 
the reduced weights and the graduated weights without using any weight painting. 